Some new details out today revealing U.S. law enforcement agencies are using more drones when staking out suspected criminals right here at home. Right now, police departments are borrowing these devices from agencies like the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Experts say it won't be long before drone technology becomes a common tool in everyday police work. Craig Whitlock is the national security correspondent for the Washington Post. Can you give us some examples of, of how agencies are using these borrowed drones, Craig? Yeah, sure. All sorts of law enforcement agencies, mostly federal, but also state and local, uh, as you can imagine, find drones to be a, a potentially valuable tool for conducting surveillance, for looking for drug operations, trailing suspects in suspicious cars, uh, but also natural disaster response. And Customs and Border Protection is one of the few agencies in the United States that has permission from the FAA to fly drones for that purpose uh, in the U.S. Well, and, and military drones are not available. They're, they're prohibited, right? The Defense Department is prohibited from using its drones in U.S. airspace? For, for law enforcement, they can train and test them, but in terms of law enforcement, Customs and Border Protection is one of the very few agencies with permission for safety reason to fly these things in U.S. airspace. That's right. And these have some very powerful tools on them, infrared uh, radar, you know, cameras that can see at night, all that kind of thing. Uh, do I have to be worried that if I go out in my backyard, I'm going to be, you know, monitored by some kind of law enforcement drone? Well, I think that's a legitimate question, and one that's going to come up more and more often as uh, the government does open up U.S. airspace to drones. Congress has passed a law saying that uh, it wants U.S. airspace to be open to commercial and public drone traffic starting next year. It's going to take a few years to implement the safety standards, but you know, law enforcement agencies are increasingly going to do this, and that's a big question is what are the guidelines, what are the laws in terms of who, what, where they can conduct surveillance of who, how long they can keep that video for. Right now, it's mostly limited to along uh, the border, but the border being, you know, anybody in the United States who lives within 25 miles of the northern or southern borders, uh, that's where Customs and Border Protection flies its drones. So that's, that's a big part of the U.S. population lives there already. Yeah. Uh, the appetite for this kind of thing among law enforcement agencies is apparently huge. Reportedly, according to documents that the Electronic Frontier Foundation got through a Freedom of Information Act request, there were 76 missions that Customs and Border Patrol flew for other agencies in 2010. In 2011, that number quadrupled. So clearly, some of these agencies get a, get a hold of these things and find out what they can do. They want to keep using them. That's right. Now, the customs agents have to fly it for them. They, these, these other agencies don't have their own drones. They're, they're essentially provided for them on loan. But, uh, but there's no question there's a huge pent-up demand for this. Law enforcement agencies have been trying to get their own uh, certificates from the FAA to fly them. And, you know, again, once airspace opens up, you know, every, you, it's pretty common sight now to have police departments fly helicopters, things like that. But those are expensive. They need pilots. They can only stay in the air so long. It'll be much cheaper for them to acquire drones, and they'll be able to stay aloft much longer. And the cameras and sensors they have are, are, are very powerful tools that they can see all sorts of distances and, and beam video to the ground immediately. Yeah, so in, in something like the search for the Sarnayev brothers in, in Boston and its suburbs, could they have called in a drone with infrared capability that might have found him hiding under that boat? Uh, cover a lot earlier? Well, uh, you know, that's some speculation whether a drone would have found them. And I mean, they certainly had a lot of people on the ground looking for these guys. And if you're under a, a boat, I don't know, uh, something from the sky would be able to see that. But certainly law enforcement types will say that that's a, that kind of scenario they want to be able to use drones for is conduct surveillance from the air over wide areas at one time. Some of these cameras can cover periods of, of several miles at once and give them zoomed in when they, when they need close-ups. So uh, again, it's these cameras and these sensors that are very powerful that, you know, that's law enforcement sees that as, as something that gives them a real leg up. Yeah, but privacy concerns as well in a lot of quarters. Craig Whitlock, who covers national security issues for the Washington Post, thank you. Sure thing, thank you.